to the very first episode of James in the Van. Uh, I'm really happy to be starting this YouTube creation. Uh, we'll be doing this every week, driving out to uh, different towns around beautiful British Columbia in this uh, gorgeous laser van. A um, couple things about the van, it's a Ford Transit uh, 250, extended wheelbase, very big in the back. Uh, we've got a speedy 360 flex back there. We've got a full graphics workstation. We got a video center so we can uh, watch some of our videos together. Uh, we also have a, an exhaust, a Quattro exhaust. Um, today we're heading up to beautiful Whistler, British Columbia to install a speed marker 300 uh, Galvo laser system into a machine shop there. Now I know Whistler is not known for its uh, industrial market, but uh, Whistler's more known for its skiing. Let's face it, skiing, snowboarding uh, in the winter time is probably Canada's biggest destination, best destination, maybe not the biggest, <laughs> for, for skiing. Um, you know, Whistler, uh, I've been there many times, never skied there, I'm not much of a skier, uh, but it's a beautiful place to visit, it's got a gorgeous village, um, I'd say probably nicer than Banff, sorry Banff, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, uh, you know in the summertime uh, in Whistler there's a lot of mountain biking, uh, you, you see cars full of, of dirty mountain bikes on the top of them going up this beautiful Sea to Sky Highway. That's where we're on now. Uh, if only you could see out the front window uh, with me, you'd see uh, absolutely beautiful mountain range up house down. Uh, anyway, um, Whistler uh, has been growing and growing and growing, and along with its rapid growth in the actual village and, and city of Whistler uh, is the industrial market. So there is an actual small industrial area in Whistler that probably mostly serves Whistler itself um, and, I, and I'm going up there to install a speed market there it's actually the first Trotec laser uh, I've ever seen up in up in Whistler so uh, I'm pretty proud of that pretty happy that uh, these guys have uh, opted to go with the uh, the speed marker it was uh, definitely the best choice for what they were doing um, as I go up this see this guy highway here we're gonna be passing through Squamish BC. Uh, we just left North Vancouver and uh, you know heading up that way so you're gonna see more and more snow uh, on the trees as we drive up there. Now this is a sort of a different kind of a video than we normally uh, put through on our YouTube channel. You know this is gonna be a, a, a weekly series where I talk about issues that you know laser users have or people who are looking to get into laser engraving, cutting, marking, are going to have as they go. Um, so I'm usually going to talk about a subject that I sort of pre-plan. Um, I'm going to be talking about your questions too. So there will be a mailbag. So um, you can uh, connect with me through the you know the YouTube comments. I'm going to be sending out information. Uh, on questions that you guys give. I'm also going to be talking a, a little bit about the, the cities that I'm in and, and showing you some of the cool places. Um, quite often we'll be stopping in at, um, at shops along the way to talk to the people around BC um, about their experiences uh, in their shops and their challenges and some of the, the cool things that, that they do. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Since uh, my mailbag is dreadfully empty right now, being our first show, uh, we're going to bypass that for now. But seriously, guys, post your questions. We really need to see these because it will give us uh, fuel for what to talk about. Um, we're, you know, we may also um, call some some experts. If I don't know the the answer, I'll I'll just dial, and you'll hear on the speakerphone here. Um, We'll be talking to some some experts, and that might become a regular thing on this show as well, which is very cool. Um, but I, I did want to talk about uh, one of the biggest challenges um, I face 
when helping people out with laser systems. So when I'm outfitting them with a laser system or when I am supporting them with a laser system is exhaust. And uh, it's, it's always tough to know what exhaust to go with. Um, a lot of people will spend $30,000 on a laser system and they'll end up uh, trying to spend as little as possible on their exhaust. They'll, they'll go and they'll buy the, the smallest fan they can and they're, they're so proud that they, they get a, this, uh, uh, what they think is a high powered fan. Um, and then later on, they find out that their lens is dirty or it's burning up uh, or they uh, are getting uh, dust and dirt in their motion system and, and they tell me, well, you said that these systems can't get dust and dirt in the motion system. Well, let me try to help a little bit. The exhaust system is a very important part of a Trotec laser. Extremely important. The reason is, is because we use the exhaust air, the positive air pressure being pulled through the dirty area, as, as I like to call it, the engraving area. It's being pulled from the motion system into the dirty area and out into either a filter or outside. Now, this positive air pressure, it helps the dust not fly around the dirty area and go in to the motion system. It stays out of the motion system. And why is that good? Why is that good? It's because there are motors, there are bearings, there's electronics, there's belts, there's pulleys, all inside of our motion system. And uh, what happens is this sticky, dusty dirt gets into all the motion system of uh, some other kind of laser engravers that don't have this technology. And it fouls up these things, creating resistance on the motors. If you have resistance on motors or if you have resistance on bearings, they're going to eventually fail very quickly in some cases, depending on how much smoke you have. So you must get rid of that dust and smoke uh, from the motion system and get it out the door, so to speak. We call this impact technology where we are protecting all of our motion system and objects from the rigors of the dust and the dirt that happen on your machine at all times. So when you buy a system, you want to make sure you have as much pressure as you possibly can being pulled out of that machine. So I once uh, was, uh, I once outfit uh, somebody with a, a fairly large laser and uh, the uh, CFM said it was supposed to be, you know, 400 CFM uh, to pull, but they, they weren't looking at the, at the pressure. There's two numbers. There's CFM and then there's WC or water column. So, and uh, water column is measured in, in inches of, of water. So what that means is there's enough pressure to pull a column of water um, one inch, one inch, one inch. It's very hard to explain, but uh, picture a hose being uh, being sucked with air, and then a big long test tube full of water uh, at the bottom, and how far you can pull water up that column, up that test tube, uh, using the pressure of the of the air. So that's what water column is. If you don't want to know about water column, forget about it and just look at the number and make sure you have that much pressure. Because CFM is only measuring the amount of air that it, it can pull. But once it comes into some resistance, uh, it will stop pulling that, that air and, and your fan will, will start to what's called cavitate. It means the fan will, will spin around, but it won't be pulling or pushing any air. And so that's really bad because now your air basically stops. So this customer um, picked up a fan that was something like 1200 CFM. He didn't look at the pressure rating. And so he was, uh, he kept calling me saying, oh, you know what, I've, I've, got, I've got flare ups, I've got some flame. 
Um, my machine's very dirty. Uh, I have to clean my lens 15 times a day. Uh, you know, what's going on? I, I, I bought the, the correct, the correct, um, fan. And when I got there, the fan, the fan motor was about that big. It was, it was a tiny little fan motor, a motor like you might see in a, in a remote control car. Uh, very, very small, uh, not very powerful. It span fast. The, the fan was, was going like crazy. But, you know, the minute you put a little bit of resistance on that uh, fan, that fan is going to fail. It's going to cavitate. So, uh, what he did uh, was uh, we went to the, uh, the store together and, and we picked out a nice big fan for him. Maybe it was a 1.5 horsepower fan. So, this was a big beefy motor on this uh, on this fan so now he has uh, he has maybe 700 CFM so he's got you know almost half the amount of CFM but now instead of having 0 0.01 water column or WC or inches of static pressure now he has uh, something like 10 inches of static pressure he's got enough power to actually pull air even if there's resistance it pulls it um, you have to uh, you have to think about pressure as as uh, as strength strength like muscle in your arm uh, if you have no muscle you can push ping pong balls off of a off of a table or or, or push them down a hallway uh, no problem you've got little muscles you're a you're a six-year-old child you can just throw them down but now with more pressure you've got more muscle now instead of ping pong balls you're throwing you know lead weights down a hallway no problem so the more resistance lead weight versus ping pong ball the better um, an, another thing that uh, that people don't quite understand um, is that the length of their pipe really 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 matters when you're trying to get the best suction for your, your laser. So, um, for instance, uh, you're in the middle of a building and you need to get your laser exhausted out and it's uh, maybe maybe it's 70 feet away and you gotta have 70 feet of travel. Well, that 70 feet of travel is going to be a lot of ping pong balls, <laughs> so, so to speak. There's going to be a ton of air that this poor fan has to pull. Uh, and, and it's going to keep pulling and it's going to keep pulling. And as it has to pull too much air, that air actually becomes heavy, too heavy for the, uh, for the fan to pull. And so you have a, you have a fan that's that's trying to pull all this air and it's it's going to start to cavitate even though it's a nice strong one and a half horsepower fan if it has to pull 70 feet of air you're going to lose pressure um, also in these long runs usually you'll have uh, twists and turns that the hose has to do um, if you have to make a hose turn to go in and out you need 45 degree angles so get two 45 degree angles to make a, a 90. A, a 90 degree angle on your hose going out is going to create what's called pressure drop. I'm not going to get into that, but it's going to drop the amount of pressure that your, your fan can, can pull because the air is hitting the 90 degree angle side and then it has to pull this way. So now you've got kind of like a log jam in the 90 degree angle of, of your uh, of your hose. So make sure that when you're planning out your exhaust strategy for your machine, that you have 45 to 245 degree angles to make a right angle. That's really important too. So the shorter the run, the better. The less 90 degree angles, the better. Now that fan, has to be bigger and bigger and bigger depending on how long that run is. So if you have a, let's say a speedy 400 
and your run is basically five feet. It's going from your laser to your wall and directly out. Well, I mean, a, a 1.5 horsepower uh, dust collector fan through a through a, a four-inch pipe is going to be perfect. But if you have a you know a, a very large um, run. If you have a 70-foot run, let's say, in fact, I, I have a, a customer who has this. I mean, this guy spent probably six or seven thousand dollars on a complete HVAC system to clear his Speedy 400 because he could not put it through uh, the the wall, and he couldn't use one of our exhaust filters because it was straight MDF. This guy's cutting.